All right, guys, here we go. Today I have a challenge for Jesse Cotton, Mr. Potato Man. So you guys know Zushin, okay? You guys know Thinian the Great Sphinx, okay? You guys know Reptilian Venomamaga. Uh-huh. You guys know Gate Guardian. And last but not least, I'm sure you guys know the Dark Sage. These five monsters that I just listed is arguably the hardest Yu-Gi-Oh monsters to ever summon. What do I mean by hardest? <laughs> these cards are literally impossible to bring out. I have these five monsters in there and I'm gonna challenge Jesse if it's possible to summon all these five monsters, all right? With just one single card. Can Jesse do it? Let's find out. All right, Val, I'm going to Jesse's house. Let's go. <laughs> Jesse! What are you doing here? What are you doing, Jesse? So, who let you in? Who? Who? What? Here, summon all these five cards with one card. Can you do it? Okay. Oh, God. Sam, you want me to summon these five? Let's, uh, let's read them. The Dark Sage, I think this is the one. I don't know how to summon the most. Could help a normal summon to set. Must first be special summon from your hand or deck by tributing one Dark Magician immediately after applying the effect of Time Wizard in which you called the coin toss correctly. When special summon this way, add one spell from next to your hand. Um, yeah, I don't know how to make a, toy, rig a coin toss. <laughs> Athenian the Great Sphinx. Cannot be normal summon to set. Cannot be special summon except by paying homage of life when both Andrea Sphinx and Sphinx Talea on your field are destroyed at the same time. So via the Pyramid of Light. When special summon itself in the hand or deck, this card is special summon successfully, or you can pay 500 life to increase attack this card by 3,000 until the end of the end phase. Garbage, but we'll go with it. Hey Guardian, I think this is the most overrated Yu-Gi-Oh card. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must first be special summoned by tributing Sangha, the Thunder, Kazajin, and Suijin. So pretty much Harakvi, but with garbage materials. Venom and Aga. This card's cool. Are you rare one? You don't have a collector or a Sam? Tisk. I can't afford it. Yeah, of course not. Uh, you drive a Tesla. Cannot be normal summoned or set. <laughs> Must be first special summoned with the Rise of the Snake de Deity. And cannot be special summoned by other ways. Except by its own effects. Oh god. What does Rise of the Snake Deity do? Jesse, that's for me to know and for you to find out. So, I don't even know how to summon this then. This card can inspire me to attack for each reptile monster in your graveyard. This card cannot be targeted by and unaffected by spell and trap and other mo effect monsters' effects. When this card is shown by battle and sent to the grave, you can banish one of the reptiles from your graveyard to summon this card. So, I'm pretty sure you can't actually win the, win the duel with this on the first turn. But can you summon the, it? Yeah, I can definitely summon it. But if there's no card that lets you force an attack on the first turn. If you want second, you could, but... And Zuish and Sleeping Giant. This is one of the newer kind of boss monsters. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned from your hand by treating a monster you control with 10 Zuish encounters. I don't know what that means. It cannot... <laughs> cannot be special summoned by other ways. Um, I lost my spot. Unaffected by the card effects. And this card battles a monster during damage calculation. Attack and defense this card becomes equal to the card attack and the monster it's battling plus 1,000. Cool. Yo, honestly, this Dark Sage yeah. might be a problem. But okay. the rest, I, I'll, I'll figure it out. Jesse, I like your play map, bro. Where'd you get it? At tsx1.com. Let's go. Link down below, guys. Oh, she's so beautiful. My, my dog lets you in. Fine. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do it. Let's go. So, off camera, Sam has told me I cannot use Ice Souls, which sucks, that card's broken. I cannot use Tour Guide again, or Hero Lives, and I can't use Six Samurai Loop. That complicates things. So, I need to be inventive now. Let's see what I can do. I found it. I was looking for something that changes types. I got it. This is it. This is how I, this is how I make it work. Assault Sentinel.
guys. That took <laughs> quite a bit of time. And I am one-upping Sam. I will also be resolving the final freaking countdown. I want to blow your minds. Before I show you guys the combo, I'd like to let you know that my website, probotatotalks.com, is going to be having a 12% off sale this weekend, Friday through Sunday. If you use the code combo potato at checkout, you will be getting 12% off on any item. That includes previously showed off Power of the Duels packs, newly released Burst of Destiny packs, or something we just added, which was Italian OTS 17 packs, where you can pull cool cards like these in the pit and permanences. Okay, so the card we're starting off with is none other than the newly semi-limited Emergency Teleport. Wow. Definitely one of the best spell cards in the game, and I've been waiting for a chance to show off something cool with this card, and uh, yeah, I'm going to show you something absolutely mind-boggling. So, first step is pretty simple, and most people know by now you get Psy Reflector, um, which says when it's summoned, you add an Assault Mode Activate or a card that lists Assault Mode Activate and it's text from your deck to your hand, so you get Assault Beast. This says you can discard it to add a Assault Mode Activate from your deck to your hand. This is important because Psy Reflector is the second effect it says you're going to reveal Assault Mode Activate in your hand to revive uh, any Assault Monster in your grave. So we're back to Assault Beast. All those effects are hard ones per turn, so this is not something that can keep you using over and over again, but this is important because it essentially gives us a Helka Fibrax without normal summoning. Um, and that is pretty strong. So here we make our good old friend Helka Fibrax, which I don't think I've actually used in any of my combos yet, but I'll be showing you why this card is broken now. We got this guy instead of Ice Ult. So this will get any level 3 lower tuner from our deck. And we're going to summon the classic Despot 001. Wait, Jesse. So you're telling me you're doing this combo without Ice Ult? No Ice Ult. And you'll wow. see in the next step, it's going to make it... This the next card makes things easy and hard at the same time. So if you've kind of seen a Despot 1 summon, you know a Rordon comes next. It requires, it's a link to that requires at least two machine monsters. And when it's summoned, I get three Mecha Phantom Beast tokens. So I know these are drama tokens, but imagine the Mecha Phantom Beasts. Uh, level three machine. But then it also says I cannot link summon for the rest of the turn. This does restrict a lot of future plays we can do. And um, for our combo, we're going to be try turning our monsters into different attributes and types. Normally we use Reaper Docus, but we can't do that with the Roar Um So Why we not? actually have to be creative. I just told you, it locks you in the links. Oh, sorry. I add a, you cannot use links for the rest of the turn now. Wow, so you're telling me you can't use links for the rest of the turn? No Reaper Docus, no Serious, no Firewall, no Isolde. All those cards that we've used before aren't here. This entire extra deck, and they're all necessary, are all Synchros, XYZs, and Fusion Monsters. Wow, that's a bold strategy, Cotton. Shut up, Sam. <laughs> but still, uh, Despot 001 comes out now. Because uh, we summoned uh, two or more machine monsters at the same time. These are all machine tokens. This comes out now, and we have Synchro Plays. Um, and we're going to feature a new card from Burst of Destiny. Uh, and Sam has already talked about it in some of his videos. This is an incredibly strong card. It's called Keep It Pitch. Level 4 Generic Synchro. When it's Synchro summoned, you can increase or decrease its level. Or equal to the level of the tuner used for it. So 3 or 5, you can make it. Uh, we'll make it 5. And then when it's sent to the graveyard, uh, you can add a monster with 600 defense from the deck to your hand. Uh, then it does some burn damage, but I don't care about that, so I'm not even going to bother. And I will be Synchro Summoning our level 5 and level 3 into... Morlord Savage Dragon? Right? Um, no. We will be making Karakuri Beredo. So Beredo is a really cool card. It uh, it requires you to make a machine non-tuner, so the Mech Man Beasts do that. And both the Karakuri Synchros of old, I don't know what the new one does, summon a Karakuri from the deck when you summon it. So it summons any Karakuri from the deck. Um, which is important because it'll give it access to more tuners to keep playing. Wait, sorry, it summons Stephen Curry from the deck? It summons a Kara Curry. Oh, okay. I thought you said Stephen Curry for some reason. Okay, sorry. No. So we'll use our effects here. We get a search and special. Uh, I don't think this chain link matters, so one, two. And 600 defense is Gale Dagra. And our Kara Curry, I think I just need a level one tuner. So I don't know if there are any other level one Kara Curry tuners, but the one I'm summoning is this one. Uh, it does nothing. That doesn't matter. But Gale Dogra is important. Uh, 600 defense, so you can add it off this. And this is how you actually accomplish your infinite loop later on in the combo. The general setup you try to get for this, you have to turn it Psychic, which we can't do with Reaper Ocus this time. And we have to equip it with a uh, equip spell called Telekinetic Charging Cell that says we don't have to pay life points for its cost. And then we can use this infinite number of times. And that's where we get really, really broken stuff going. So it's going to be in our hand. We haven't almost summoned yet, so it'll come up later. Uh, now we have our level 1 tuner and level 3, so we can get rid of these now. And we can make Herald of the Arc Light. 
Yes, sir. So Lordon does have another effect where you can tribute up to three monsters and the end effect based on the number of monsters you tribute. So for our case, we're going to tribute two, and when you tribute two monsters for Lordon, it summons any mecha phantom used from the deck. Is it a cost tribute? Yes. So we can summon Tether Wolf. Tether Wolf says, when a special summon and you control a Mecha Phantom Beast monster, you can summon two Mecha Phantom Beast tokens. So you're gonna form a chain links, one and two. Arclysis, when sent to the grave, you add a ritual spell or monster. So we're gonna add one of the three ritual cards we're going to need. Uh, and it'll be Fire Fist Eland. I'll get to this in a second. And we get two tokens out. Now, because we summon two machine monsters at the same time, we get a good friend. Despot 001 here, which should be called Mecha Phantom Beast 001 at this point, because that's all you ever summon it in. Um, and we can keep playing still. So, instead of making another Arc Light here, we are going to use this Despot to make level 7 Synchro. Two level 3s and a 1. Yes, sir. Make Power Tool Dragon. Wow. So, generic level 7 Synchro, that's not once per turn. Or, it's once per turn, but if you summon a second one, you can use it again. You reveal three equipped spells in your deck, and one gets randomly, randomly added to your hand. Every time you do this, though, you're going to pick three of the same equip spells. That way, you don't have to worry about getting the wrong one. So Wait. only real three overdone burials. I have a question. Yeah. You said that you're going to do this combo without using any banned cards. Isn't Premature Burial banned? Okay, Sam, you know this is not Premature Burial. Why? Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Overdone Burial. So Overdone Burial, sorry. Yes, I'll get to what that does in a second. So two go to deck, one go to hand. And now, if you recall, we've done all this off of our e-teleport. We have not normal summoned yet. So this means this Gale Dogra doesn't need to be summoned by alternative methods. We don't need to use Saryuja or anything special to get this out. We can just plop it down. Awesome. Yes, sir. Very easy uh, piece of the combo. Normally, you need to figure out some other way to get it onto the field. This is nice and simple, though. Uh, so we, this Gale Dogra says, pay 3,000 life points, send a monster direct to the grave. So while it's we like to have not pay life points, we can do twice without paying life points. So I'm going to send two hills of the Arc Lights. Wait, what question. So it's it's a cost to pay, right? Yes. But uh, It's a cost to pay, but it's not a cost to send. No. What if I just... Why do you have my internet permanent, Sam? Put that back. Sorry. So, I add the other ritual cards that are important for me. Advanced Ritual Art and Megalith Auk. So Auk is going to be used for Infinite Loop, which will come later, but right now I just need it to discard for Overdone Burial. It's actually ne Megalith Ouch, please. It's... And you're going to feel an ouchy after this, don't worry, Sam. <laughs> so we add these, and Advanced Ritual Art says we can ritual summon a ritual monster from our hand. Um, by sending normal monsters from our deck with the level of the retro monsters, so six for any land. So right now you have 2,000 life because you pay 6k for the Odon. That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, I will use my advanced ritual art, and I'm going to summon Eland. Eland says I can discard a monster to set a fire formation spell from my deck. Or trap, but who's setting a trap off this? Let's be real. Right. Uh, so I'm going to set, send, I have to send level six total. So I'm going to send summon skull. Uh, it can be any level six or anything adding up to six, but this is just easiest. Uh, so I get Eland out, and I can discard a monster, so this Auk. And I get to set a Fire Formation card, so I get 10 key out. Is that a hard once return? Uh, this? I'm pretty sure it is. But that doesn't matter, because we can only use 10 key once anyways. So we get our 10 key out, and 10 key lets us add any level 4 or Beast War from deck to hand. So the next card I'm going to add is another Assault card, actually. Um, I wasn't planning on using a, a full Assault card, but it worked out to be this way. Assault Sentinel says, it has some random effect that doesn't matter for us, but the effect we care about is you can target one face of monster you control, reveal one single monster in your extra deck, and if you do the targeted monster's type and attribute, become the same as revealed monsters until the end of this turn. Um, so you can target EL Dogma and become the Light Psychic by revealing any Light Psychic in your extra deck. This is important for us because we have to get this to be a Psychic without using Reaper Dokus, and there's not many ways to do that. This is one of them. Now what we want to do, we have to get this on the field. That's next. We need to get this on the field and get this and get the charging cell. Once we get to that point, we should have our combo or our combo set up the initial phase. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the grave with Overdone Burial, discard a monster, and revive another one from your grave with a lower level, and then it gets its effect, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So we have to make level one tuner. It could be this or this spot. doesn't matter. Uh, and then this is level six, and we can make level seven synchro. So we can make Power Tool Dragon. Another one. So you can't just search Charging Cell here um, because you have no way of getting this back on the field. So it just dies, right? Yes, yeah, it's gone. Um, so we have to do something else complicated. Com little, little extra steps. We're going to reveal three Living Fossils from our deck. Living Fossil will let us keep cycling back our monsters to get to where we want. So we get one of these to our hand. And now what we're going to do is we're going to overlay these two. Two level seven monsters for Mecha Phantom Beast Draco Sack. This is a Mecha Fan and Beast Assault Mode combo. <laughs> wow. Um, this is in our hand. One other card here is Assault Mode Activate. That doesn't matter, but 
So those two cards are in your hand, yep. Yes. Uh, Draco Sack says, we can tribute Mecha Phantom Beast, we want to tribute this. Let's destroy a card on the field, and then we can't attack with them. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, no, you have to destroy this one. You just get clear space on your field. And we're just going to destroy the tanky. Um, we just, we're trying to make space on our field. Because without Link Monsters, you don't actually have a way of getting rid of monsters with different levels from each other. Right. Um, so that's important. Uh, and then it also lets us detach one of summon two machine Mecha Phantom Beast tokens. Keep summoning those out. Living Fossil uh, lets us revive a level four from the grave. Um, so we can revive anything. It can be even this. And we can add another ritual. I don't have any left because uh, I, I only play those in this deck. The ones that are in the grave. I want to make a Duke Garrison. You have to make it up top here. That's why we got rid of the Roar on. This one was the one that's properly summoned, right? Yeah. You have some of the one that's properly summoned. It can be any level 4, though. You can bring back uh, this dude as well. This whole Sentinel or the Assault Beast. Doesn't matter. Uh, that's not part of the combo. This goes to the Grave. You summon it up here. That way, now you can use the Draco set. And then you have space for the Despot to trigger again. Because that card does not want to return. So, we can now synchro all of these together. And summon our third copy of Power Tool Dragon. Dumb card. So we're real three equips in our deck, and yes, I know this combo requires you to play nine equip spells, but hey, why not? That's crazy. So we reveal our telekinetic charging cells, and um, we're gonna get one of them. And now you can see here, this is easy. Do Garrus revive from our deck, from our grave, any level, uh, any monster in defense mode. So we get back our Soul Sentinel, like mentioned, and now we target our Gildagra, and we reveal Omega. So it becomes a light psychic monster. Then we can equip the charging cell, and our phase one of the combo is complete. Okay. At this point, the world is our oyster. Wow. So you set this up, now you, you had the loop now? The next is all a formality. Okay. It is going to be an extremely long, complicated process to get everything else on the field. Okay. But at this point in the game, I have complete control over absolutely everything in both players' hands, deck, field, and grave, and life. So, you, seriously? So you can burn, you can... You I can will loot. show you, I will do everything. I will make them suffer. You're I will gain infinite life. I will final count down them. I will make them pay. Are you so, serious? Oh my god. <laughs> Jesse, so you figured this out. Yes. That's a bold strategy, Carl. Right, how many times are you going to say that rest of this video? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, Gale Dogra, we can now use its effect a limited number of times. Um, that's awesome. The thing to note, though, is we only have three cards in our action deck. What's the three cards left? We got the Dark Mission Fusion Monster, which will come up later. Whoa, what it's is part of the secondary loop you're going to start doing. Wow. Um, Elder Antiasis and Omega. So these are the other two cards you're going to be sending off Gale Dogra. These and your uh, Arc Lights. Wait, wait. So can you uh, can you do it like step step by step? So like, of course. You understand? So, so what we're going to do now is going to use Gale Dogra to send Antiasis. Antiasis says when it's sent to the grave, you can destroy a card in the field. Not once return. So what do we want to destroy? We're going to clear off our field now, except the Gildagra, so we can start going into the second part of our combo. So let's get rid of this. Okay, so you're Gildaggering, send, uh, send, Entis, pop, Mega Phantom Beast, okay? Now we're going to use 3,000 again, but we don't pay light points. Wow, send Omega. So we send Omega, and Omega as well, so they can shuffle itself back, plus oh. any of the card and Idle Prayer's Grave. So you're, oh, so you're shuffling back Entis? Yes. Oh my god, Jesse. And I repeat, pop the power tool. Send this, put them back, pop. Send this, put them back, pop. Send this, put them back. Oh my god, Jesse! What have you done? So you can see here, uh, this part's a little more standard. People do know about this loop a lot more, where you can start using the Omega um, to put back and kind of control your graveyard at all times. Define people, because I didn't know this loop existed. Well, you, you're kind of bad, Sam, so. Wow. <laughs> wow, okay, continue. So now we can put back a bunch of cards we need for later. So I'm gonna. Send a Mega, put back the Herald. Send a Mega again, and put back another Herald. And I'm gonna repeat this until I have these all back in my deck. So go back in the extra deck. And I'm also gonna put back um, all my Ritual cards. Okay, so you just, so guys, if you guys don't understand, uh, to just simplify this even more, he keeps sending Omega, and Omega keeps putting stuff back to his deck. Back. So it's like, you know, so it's infinite, right? Wow. Yeah, so I'm gonna need these, and then I'm gonna send all three Arc Lights one at a time to add back these cards. Wow, so you put these cards back, set Art Light back with Gyo Dagra, and you're just adding these cards to hand again. Yes. Okay, so that's your deck, so you can put your deck over there if you want, just so people can understand. Sure. And now I'm gonna put back my Omega, and these again, so keep repeating shuffle, 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 shuffle. Five million step combo. Um, that's not on the field yet, my bad. So, so it is your extra deck. Well, it's an extra deck too, yeah. Yep. So I can use a Mantra for Art again, and now I'm gonna be summoning Megalith Ark. 
Ouch. Ouch. Sorry. Yeah, ouch. Whatever. Um, and I want to send level four. So I'm going to send seven colored fish, because why not? Oh my god, is that DC? F what? Okay, uh, never mind. Okay, I don't, I don't know what Sam's going for there. Maybe you guys know. Um, and when Ouch, ouch is summoned, uh, Ouch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it is Ouch, though. Dude. Sorry, whatever, sir. What, how do you know it's Ouch? It's, it's, it's in Thai. It's is it like, Thai, actually? Yeah. yeah, it's like pronounced that in Thai, yeah. Oh, I know that, okay. Ouch. Well, I'll have to ask you about the Megalith lore later on. Okay, sorry, yep. <laughs> so when it's summoned, I draw one, discard one. Um, which is cool. So we draw one card. So can you reveal what you draw? It doesn't matter what I draw. I'm Moki Lovely. Awesome card. <laughs> oh, so these are part of your deck, right? So it doesn't matter if you draw Moki Moki. This is part of my deck. Yes, I will need this eventually. Not right now, but I will need Moki Moki in part of my combo later. <laughs> so you draw that, yep. So let's put a face down. It doesn't matter right now. Uh, and I'll discard the Elan. Um, and now we can Gale Dogra. Send Elder Anti Anasis again. The pop the Ouch. And we send Omega. Shuffle back this, send Omega, 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 shuffle back this. Case, okay. So what so you you're back in my deck. So what you're then... basically doing right now is you're gonna you're gonna be basically looping send ouch me. to draw your entire deck. This is what I'm seeing right now. Yes, so keep adding these back. Let's shuffle these back again. So this can let me this this is now set up an infinite draw loop. We're using these cards. I can draw and discard my entire deck. So this draws one and discards one, which means anything I draw, instead of discarding an E-Land, I can also discard that card. So at any point, if there's a card I don't need in my hand right now, I can just put it in the grave. Because um, you always shuffle it back anyways. Yeah. So at this point, I'm gonna draw my entire deck and any card I want in the grave will go in the grave. So for example, I don't want my Mizukis in my hand. So these are all gonna be discarded. Wow, so this is your hand right now, basically. This is my hand. So, Jess, guys, if you guys are confused, Jesse basically kept looping Kyo Dagger with Hero the Arclight. Just keep summoning Ouch. Because it's not one, hard once return, right? It's not a hard once return? Uh, no. So, you, wow. So, you're gonna basically do like this a million times, basically. Yeah, and I can basically draw and discard my entire deck. So, I'm putting all these traps in the grave um, as well. Because you're just discarding it off Ouch because you draw a card. Yeah. Wow! And I'm doing this because, um, so this is my hand, that's my extra deck. Because um, Dark Magician says when a spell is activated, a spell trap, I can reveal the top card of my deck and draw it, and with the spell trap I can set it to my field, and I can use it that turn. So this is a way of using your traps. Wow! Turn you, um, you play, so you can use it on the first turn pretty much. And because it's not a hard one for turn, even the same thing where you're, you change your loop from this, to start looping this. How? So now you can use traps as if they're spell cards. How? I just told you how. Jesse, how? Wow, you're a genius, man. How wow? Well, how wow, bro. How, wow. So this is your hand, you have no cards in your deck. Uh, yeah, this no is... cards. That's your hand? This is my hand. So if you, theoretically, if you had the Exodia, you probably already won. Yeah. Wow! Okay, so I'm going to... Okay, so this is your, this is, this is your extra deck right now, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna gain a thousand life with Dian Keto. Why are you doing that? Uh, it'll be important later. Omega, put this back in my deck, and I repeat the draw loop. With what? The the same thing as before. Omega, back my virtual cards, put them back, draw again. I'm gonna keep drawing and discarding the Eland and using Dying Keto. So, so now you have infinite life. So I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna say I'm gonna use this 40,000 times. Okay, so what? So I have uh, four, uh, f uh, four million life. No, you have four billion life. That's wrong, but sure. Um, <laughs> 40 billion life. No. 40,000 times a thousand. Yeah. How much is that? So you just add three extra zeros at the end, right? So how do you get 40 billion? Sorry, you have four million. Right, so you have four, uh, yeah. I'm gonna call you Jesse Bezos. Fine, I should be, a 40 million life needs to be higher. So I need, I need to, I'm gonna use it for 40 million times then. Yes. Okay. Jesse Bezos, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have 40 million life now. Because you can't, can't touch this. Jeez. I can just deck them out now. They'll never be able to do 40 million damage to me, right? Or 40 billion damage to me. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I can just shuffle back my entire 50 card deck and just wait for them to eventually deck out of cards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So this is important um, for a reason we'll show later. I, I, I was trying to figure out how to summon Dark Sage and I couldn't figure it out. There's not a single card on the effing game that lets you rig, rig your coin toss results. So the only way to do it is to keep trying with the Time Wizard, and if it blows up your field, you have to reset it up over and over again, and okay. you keep burning yourself. Okay. But um, 
You have to make sure you have enough life to not kill yourself with Time Wizard's effect. So that's why I did this. Okay, so so now what's in your grave? Nothing? Uh, a bunch of stuff. So I'll use Time Wizard. I don't know Time Wizard. Final Countdown. So oh, that's in your hand? Yeah, well, this is, this is my hand. Okay, so you just activate the Final Countdown like that. You just pick Sure, okay. yeah, why not, right? Okay, why not? Well, okay, so, wow. <laughs> why not? Wow. Um, now what I want to do is I'm going to Polymerization. Because it's in your hand, right? Yes, and I'm going to send Dark Magician and Time Wizard to the grave. Yes, sir. Summon the Dark Magician card I was talking about earlier. So I want to read it here, just for you guys. So it requires a Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl plus one Spellcaster. Once returned, the Spell Trap card effect is activated. Except during the damage step, you can draw one card. Then if it's a spell or trap, you can set it. And if it was a trap card or a quick play spell, you can activate it this turn. If this card is destroyed, you can special summon one Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl from your hand deck or a grave. So the last part doesn't matter. We don't actually need to summon monsters, although kind of relevant. And I send a grave, and these are in a grave. Cool. So now what we need to do is I want to put Omega in the grave with Gale Dogra. And I want to put it back in my deck plus something else that I want to draw and activate this turn. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do DNA surgery. So you should put it on top of your deck. It goes on top of my deck. Um, it's back in my deck now. I want to put it back because I always need it again later. Um, and I'm going to use Monster Reborn. Wait, how, um, how are you putting it back with itself? Huh? Yes, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Monster Reborn. And then revive the Time Wizard. And I'll use the spell effect. I can Dark Magician. So I get DNA Surgery and I go set. Uh, this will be important in case I miss. So uh, that's why I have it here. But you're Jesse Khan. You never miss. <laughs> I wish. So we get to that point. Cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to Elder and Anesis. We're going to pop the Dark Conditions. And then our Omega. We'll shuffle back the Dark Conditions. And we'll put Omega back in the grave. Shuffle this back. Shuffle this back. Shuffle this back. Shuffle this back. <laughs> that makes sense? Uh, no. What, what are you? Sorry. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, sure. So Omega. Sh shuffle this back. Put Omega back. Shuffle this back. Put Omega. Shuffle this back. Put Omega in. Shuffle this back. Put Omega back in. Shuffle this back. Yes, sir. So these will all go back in the deck. Um, I do I have my ritual stuff in here as well? Sorry, so then I have to restart this loop again. Omega shuffle all this back. And now I'm going to redo the loop for the arc light to redraw my entire deck again. So I'm going to redraw all these cards. With with the, with the Alk? With the Alk? Yeah, so redo the, the Alk loop to redraw these cards. Again, any card I want. That's cool. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to Polymerization again. And I'm going to use Dark Condition. This time I'm going to use Dark Sage. Um, so we can make our Dark Conditions again. And that's not a hard once per turn draw, wow. Um, and now I'm going to Omega and... Does it matter what I put back in here? I don't think it matters. I'll get Dark Sage back Pyramid of Light for later. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to Monster Reborn back to Dark Condition and I get this for later. The Pyramid of Light, whatever. This, will, this is used for the Fiend and the Great Sphinx later. Oh, so you're activating this to set Pyramid of Light. You yeah. can activate both of these in the same turn. Yeah, I can use both of these in the same this turn. Whoa. Um, now what I do is I'm going to redo the Alkalope. To redraw these. So yeah, again, shuffle back all the ritual cards with Omega, then summon back the Ouch. Ouch will draw a discard, the E land, and then I'm gonna draw my whole deck out again. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna have these back in my hand. Uh, Omega is gonna use it out, and I'm gonna put back Dark Sage. To the top of your deck? Uh, when I use time, oh, wait, no, I have to, my opponent has to control a monster for Time Wizard, so I have to give them a monster. So she and Spy, uh, sorry, the print it. So that's one piece of monster you control. Uh, it's active this card. Give control of such a monster to your opponent until the end phase of this turn. So, give them this. Um, if you want to back, if we ever want to back, what we're going to do is we're just going to pop it, and then we're going to shuffle back. So, it doesn't matter, we get this back later. But now we can use Time Wizard. Yep, sorry, let me just stay up there. You feel nicer? Oh, time wait. Wizard effect. So, you have Dark Sage in your deck only, and you're using Time Wizard's effect? Yes. Call a coin, sir. I'll call heads. You love heads or you love tails? Because tails, heads. heads always, tails. So we'll do it, yeah, we got it wrong. Take a bunch of damage. Dang, flab it. <laughs> but, do not be mad. We have to zombie world from our hand. We prepared for this. Now our Gale Dogra is a zombie. We can bring back the Gale Dogra now with Mizuki. Uh, same as the God cards. And now we're going to Mystical Space Typhoon with the zombie world. And we are going to activate the DNA surgery we intentionally set before. Turn this into Psychic Monster. And use the other charging cell. Wow. And we are back, we set up. We're gonna Omega. We're gonna put back this, this, this. Just in this, case you fail. This, 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 this. And we are going to put them back. 
We're gonna keep performing the ouch loop. Guys, I know it's a little bit confusing, but you guys understand, right? I think you So we're gonna reset the loop, and what we can do here is we can get another a second DNA surgery. That way, um, if it fails again, we can reset set up the loop. Keep going. So pretty much, uh, we're gonna redraw these all these cards, and this is a way of making sure that in case you miss on the Dark Magician, or on the Time Wizard, you can always get back to the same spot. You can gain back to life, you can get back to here, and you'll never run out of cards. Uh, and when you go through all your Mizukis, like if you, if you fail that many times in a row, you can barrel over dimension, put three banished cards back in the grave, not once per turn, and then you can use the Mizukis again and shovel this back in your deck. So this gives you an infinite number of attempts. So it is impossible for you to keep missing on the time magic. Because you can keep on doing this loop until you eventually, eventually hit your effing Dark Sage. Okay, so let's say that you you, you did call it right, summon Dark Sage. Yeah, because I don't want to do with five right. million steps again. Right. Um, so the Dark Sage is on the field. And your and yeah, so any, any yeah, any of the okay. any, all the cards. Let's go back to our original spot that we were at so they understand. So okay. you have uh, Time Wizard and Dark Sage, so you, so you can basically put it back on top of your deck, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, so hit this dies now because Time Wizard. So basically, then, you drew your entire deck, you discarded Dark Sage, you put it back right, on top so of your deck with Omega. How does this work again? Should being the Dark Condition. Oh, so it doesn't even destroy the wizard. Okay. And I'm not going to add a spell. Um, okay, so here. So let's go back to that original pos position yeah. that we had. And then let's say that this is on top of your deck because you use okay. Omega, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is the, your, this is on your opponent's field. Omega should put this card back on the top of your deck because you did you accomplish your infinite loop. Now you're gonna do Time Wizard again, right? Once yep. per turn because you revive this back in Monster Reborn. So you you guys understand? He constantly move loop Monster Reborn to bring these two cards back on the field. Now you're just gonna use Time Wizard. You're gonna call it right. Let's say you're gonna call Heads. Yeah, so I'm sure you guys want to sit here for five hours watching me yes. call it a coin toss wrong. A coin toss wrong. <laughs> right. But do you guys understand that Jesse can keep doing it until he calls it right? So now Dark Sage triggers in the deck. Should be the Dark Magician when I call Time Wizard correctly. I think this also dies because of Time Wizard, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This also dies. So Dark Sage out. Um, step one complete. So that's one card. So is there any way for you to fast forward summoning all the other cards as well? So no. Like it, like it, there's no other way? <laughs> Patience, Sam. Sorry. This is the hardest one. This is the hardest one. Okay. Um, this card, Sam, is the one of the first cards Sam suggested I summon, and I'm like, I don't know how to do this because there's no way to guarantee it. You literally just have okay. to set yourself up to do it a billion times. Hey Jesse, uh, what are you listening to right now? You hear a theme song? Oh, what? What? What was this? Jesse. Clearly for different different chord. <laughs> Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> you weren't <laughs> <You> were listening. <laughs> So yeah, Dark Sage. Um, we already added back the Shien Spy. We we infinite looped it. We're gonna pop this with Elrond and Anisus. This doesn't matter. Okay, so you're sending Entis, pop this, and then we're gonna put it back with okay. Omega. Because you're gonna send Omega again. Yep. So I know there's gonna be steps here, but guys, trust me, <laughs> you kind of have to. So Shien Spy, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna give our opponent the Dark Sage. Okay. So the reason I do this now um, is I'm gonna keep giving my opponent all my monsters. Uh, just because to get, give myself space to keep playing. Right. Um, now what I can do is I can awk loop. So now I, I can um, I can repeat the awk loop, putting back anything. So I can put back this, um, and then draw one, discard one. And this time when I'm gonna discard all my this piece, and I repeat by shuffling back random cards. The point is you want to eventually. Oh, sorry. Then I monster reborn. Where's my monster reborn? This back. Shuffle this back with Omega. Omega, shuffle back. Draw, uh, Auk loop again. Ouch loop, sorry. Discard, reborn. Put it back again. Ouch again. Ouch again. So you're draw. just constantly ouching to keep drawing. Yeah, so this one's easy. This this part, this one is uh, not complex at all to summon. Um, so you tribute all three. Uh, so reborn it back and then put it back. And let's put this back as well. Um, so I'll tribute all three to Gate Guardian. I'm gonna ouch loop, draw this card, add these to my hand, I'm gonna give my opponent the Gate Guardian now. So that's two down. Uh, clear enough space, I get these back at the end of the turn. Wow. That's not important. Next step is, what do you want to summon next? Uh, Zushin. Zushin. So this one says, it's, people may not be as familiar with this one. This card is hard to summon, but it's not as iconic, I guess. So it cannot be a normal summon a set. It must be special summoned from your hand by tripping a monster you control with 10 Zushin counters. Nice. Um, it cannot be special summoned by other ways. Once per turn, you can reveal this card in your hand, then target one level one normal monster you control. Keep this card revealed to the end of the, this turn. Place one Zushin counter on it. 
Un uh, this card is unaffected by the card effects. If this card battles a monster during damage cal calculation, attack and defense of this card becomes equal to the current attack of the monster it is battling plus 1,000. So, sure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Auk Loop to put this back, draw, and then discard Moki Moki. I'm going to rewind the Moki Moki. I can reveal it once per turn. Give this a Zushin counter. So it goes up to one. I'm going to put back Monster Reborn. I'm going to Ouch Loop again. I keep, sorry, I keep mispronouncing it. To draw and discard. And I'm discard the Zushin. So, so this has a counter on it? There's one counter. How come? Because Zushin said you can put a counter on it? You reveal it to give a counter, yeah. So okay. I'm going to put Omega again. Shuffle back the Zushin. Ouch Loop again. So uh, I'm just going to show it again in case you guys aren't following it still. Yeah, it's in my hand, I think. Ouch Loop, draw one, discard one. So draw one and discard random card, doesn't matter. And add this back as well. Reveal it, counter two. Uh, shuffle back, random extract monster. And I'm gonna repeat this times to discard it. Put it back over and over. And every time I do that, it gains one counter. So it's gonna get 10 counters on it. You get the Zushin out. And um, then I can special summon it here. By attributing the Moki Moki with 10 counters on it. Three down. This one I actually can't give to my opponent because uh, it says unaffected by the card effect. So I should probably summon it last, but fine. Next, I'm going to do, what do you want to do? Final Countdown, Venomaga, or Thinian? Venomaga. So, um, Venomaga, I have to Oak Loops to draw one, discard one, doesn't matter. Put back Moki Moki. Discard Shyster, whereas um, I think this is the one I have to put in the grave. And I'm going to have to, actually, I have to get back my Dark Condition and a Spellcaster. So I'm going to get back a spellcaster. I'm gonna put these back in my deck with Omega. Ouch loop again, draw them. Um, and then I have polymerization for these two. For Dark Witch is on grave, so you can just throw Omega loop uh, it. Omega loop it back. Before you do that? Yeah. Uh, so Omega back. Obviously before polymerization. This is on the field now. And I'm gonna also Omega back this trap that lets me summon the snake thing. So now I'm gonna Monster Reborn. Um, this is equipped. And I'm gonna summon back the Venomenon. And this triggers, and it's gonna set my Rise Snake DD. Rise Snake DD says when this is destroyed, I can special summon the Venomonaga. So, Gildagra, pop your Venomon. In fact, pop this. Use it this turn because I got it off this. And it summons our Venomonaga. Oh, uh, this also can't be targeted. So, <laughs> so I cannot, I cannot choose by either of these cards, which is kind of funny. Oh, so you should have just done that. It's fine. I think I'm pretty sure this is still enough space still. Um, so I can pop this and this again and put it back. Um, put it back, put it back, put it back, put it back. Any spellcaster put back. So these all go back to my hand, which is nice and awesome. Um, and now what I can do I is- This my light, right? Yeah, this will come back. Honestly, guys, I hope you're you're understanding this or uh, what's happening right now. <laughs> it but is. It, it's really it's really confusing. But Jesse, I, I think you did a great job explaining how. I hope so. Yeah, like in the beginning of how the the ouch loop worked and also how yeah. the the heal dog dogger worked as well. So now I can get this guy out again, and I'm gonna shuffle back with Omega. Again, I'm gonna shuffle back this time. Power of Pocket Destiny from the grave that I also discarded, and I can Monster Born back anything. It doesn't matter. Um, and now I'm gonna use Dark Conditions, Power of Pocket Destiny. I'll be, I'll be because use you, it this turn. Yep. Power Clock Destiny says, move the turn count forward by one. So I'm going to repeat this now. I'm going to pop this with Endesis, pop this with uh, and then put everything back and do it again. So I'm going to use this until they have one turn off final countdown. I'm going to reset it. So at any point, I can end the game with final countdown. Wow. By activating this card. Wow. So you just did it like 19 times, basically. Yes. But I want to keep twine with them, though. Yep. So I'll, I'll use this in the end. I want to keep, keep showing off what yep. this deck can do. Um, so now, what does Pyramid Light do again? This face of cards, move from your side of the field, destroy Angel Sphinx and Sphinx Talaya on your side of the field and move them from play. So those are the three cards we need here. Um, so, so we need some Athenian, which says this card not be normal summoner set. This card cannot be special summoned except by paying 500 life. When both Angel Sphinx and Sphinx Talaya on your side of the field are destroyed at the same time, then you special summon from your hand or deck this card. When this is special summon, you can pay 500 life to increase attack this card by 3,000. Sure, whatever, who cares? Bad card, but we're summoning anyways. So these both say, uh, if you control Pyramid of Light, pay 500 to special summon this card. From the hand? Yeah. Wow, that's really good. N not really. Okay, sorry. <laughs> control Pyramid of Light. So after Pyramid of Light. And you can activate this because you, you looped it with. Set it off this, yeah. This. So you can use it this turn. So pay more life, that way infinite, all, our 40 billion is untouched. Uh, summon both these out, and then nice and simply, Elder Any and Assist pop this. And when this dies, it pops both of these. 
And when they destroy it at the same time, pay 500, summon up Canyon. Then Elder en Entity, pop this. We're finally reached the end. Uh, at the end of the turn, we get back. And then we shall unlock Final Countdown. Wow. That is insane! So how is this for an end field, guys? Oh my god! Jesse, and you have no cards left in your deck? Nope. You have... Oh my god, Jesse, you are insane, man. Wow. So, okay, so what do you have right now, Jesse? I got a Zushin, the Sleeping Giant, the Gate Guardian, Dark Sage, Fiend the Great Sphinx, Venomanaga, the Deity of the Poisonous Snakes, the Dark Magician Fusion Monster, and Final Countdown, resolving 420 on the first turn. Jesse, all this with one card. Singular card. Jesse, you're insane. Honestly, I, I, I came here uh, at around like 11 uh, a.m. and right now it is 7 p.m. So I was here for eight hours for you to figure out this combo. Thanks, Jesse. This loop is far more powerful and flexible than the Six Samurai loop. And although it's, uh, it may seem a little more complex, you can do anything you absolutely want to do. If there's any stupid billion card combo your heart desires like this one, you can do it. So it's really, really cool. Obviously, not a very good combo in actual competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, but it is broken. Jesse, thank you so much, man. You are insane. Guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, smash thumbs up button. Jesse, what are your overall thoughts about doing combos like this? It's it's fun, huh? It, yeah, it's fun. It can, it's a lot of work. Um, <laughs> I can spend a couple hours figuring this stuff out, but it is kind of rewarding, like a, like a puzzle or a Sudoku almost, and I like those type of mental challenges, so it's still cool. All right, guys, this is your boy Sam and Jesse Cotton signing off. All right, guys, peace. Congrats, Jesse. That's a bold strategy, Cotton.